good morning. Hmm, I'm in a very different place this morning because Spirit gave me the message of the day more in a more pronounced way than has happened in a, in a while. The title is 2012. Angry Man Says, Tell Me About Jesus. It has been a while since I've had so vivid a dream. It shifted me into a very different space. I was at some sort of gathering and one of my son's friends was there looking rather forlorn. I would characterize him as an angry young man. The first time he hugged me, he was silent. It was strange because he never hugs me. Then he came back and hugged me again. He put his head against my shoulder and said, Tell me about Jesus. In the dream I told him, He loves you more than anyone ever has. He cried. This has deeply affected my mood and my focus as I came to the computer this morning and read Tut's message of the day. Tut is Mike Dooley. And his message goes like this. I have to admit, Ron, when we thought of adding the dimension of time to space, it was not wildly popular. True, it would make possible evolution, reunions, and cute before and after photos but it would also add to the illusion of separation. Horror of horrors. Spontaneous manifestations would spontaneously cease. Egad. And the only way anyone could get anything done would be if they held on to and moved with their vision in thought, word, and deed even when present circumstances appeared absolutely unchanged for their efforts. And then he adds, yeah, sign me up. Thinking of you beaming with childlike joy, the universe and the PS. Time and space, Ron, still the ultimate adventure. Had I gone forward with what I thought I would talk about today as I went to bed last night, which I did not sleep well, but that's another story that I don't need to go into. I've been fairly frustrated because with all the things that I've worked toward, and I know many others have been working towards in changing our world and making it peaceful, circumstances still appear absolutely unchanged, not relatively unchanged, absolutely unchanged. The world remains a place that seems to work hard at creating fear and anger and sadness and all that we would label negative emotions. There's so much pain and so much suffering. I have not been able to get back into my laughter therapy since the event of Sunday or events of Sunday. In many respects, I am the angry young man. And I think that's what the dream was telling me. 
because every part in a dream is another aspect of you. And so one of the more angry people I know in the world on a personal level is who appeared to me in the dream to reveal the part of myself that I maybe was trying to put more of a facade on than to be real and genuine with the anger that I have felt and I have noticed it especially over the past week. As I plot and plan to stand up more and more to the beast that is our world government, that is the corporate enemy, and it is an enemy, certainly appears to be an enemy. The false religion, all that's wrong in the matrix. And I've worked so long and so hard to stand in the truth. And I feel oftentimes not only misunderstood by some of my friends that I see on a regular basis, but ignored by the world I'm trying so hard to change. The world of greed, the world of deception. It's strange that he would ask me to tell him about Jesus because I've been very angry at Christianity. I've never not loved Jesus. I've never blamed Jesus for the way that Christians are. But it breaks my heart that the arrogant, self-centered, judgmental attitude portrayed by most Christians denigrates who Jesus is to me, who was to me as a little child, was to me as a young man and sometimes almost hides from me as a more mature individual because of all the things that I've learned and all the pains that I've suffered at the hands of Christians or those that claim to be Christian. I don't know why the angry young man is angry. <laughs> I've seen him display his anger on a number of occasions over the many years that I've known him. Several years, I shouldn't say many, several years that I've known him. I'm talking about the individual in the dream, of course. I would never picture him even being interested in Jesus. And much of the world is like the angry young man. You see, to me, Jesus has nothing to do with a religion. <laughs> if you haven't gotten that, I'm not in fa very much in favor of, of really any religion. And yet, I do my best to have respect for all of the religions. Because I know, for the most part, the people in these religions are angry young men and women trying to find their way in a time and space universe in which their greatest dreams seem to elude them, in which help does not seem present sometimes at the most difficult times in the individual life. Jesus wouldn't have any problem with people of different religions like his so-called followers do. Because Jesus got it. And we need to get it. That we are all one. 
that the only way we're going to bring the changes about that we want to see is if we're willing to come together and stop judging one another. In my mystics and training class yesterday, and I got a ride from the teacher, because <laughs> she's the only one that lives in Melbourne and drives to Rockledge, or I'm sorry, Coco Village. And she graciously picked me up and then brought me home. But one of the people especially was really angry at me, saying, you brought, in regard to what happened on Sunday, you brought that all on yourself. You're to blame for what happened. If you had done what yet you were supposed to do, it would not have happened. And there are many of you that listen that feel that way. Because you don't get it. And sometimes in recent days I have felt alone. Yeah, I know. There's lots of you that are right there with me and I'm not alone. I know that. But when I'm saying alone now, I'm feeling alone in the sense of heavenly help, shall we say. Of the divine solace that not just says, don't worry, Ronnie, it'll be okay. But the heavenly help that will stand with me and meet the enemy head-on with the ability to withstand the attack and come through it unscathed. It's interesting this morning that I'm feeling more pain in my body in the two places that were injured on Sunday than I have in the past couple of days. I find it interesting, maybe because I'm getting in touch with my anger. But you notice as I'm getting in touch with my anger and giving myself permission, I'm sort of laying my head on my shoulder and saying, remind me about Jesus. And my answer to me is my answer to every one of you that's feeling that. He loves you more than anyone ever has. And I'll add what came to me in the meditation room. More than you've ever loved yourself. Because we've forgotten who we are. And I don't care if you call this Christed One Jesus or if you call him Yeshua, or Joshua ben Joseph, or whatever else you want to, what other, other name, Isa, the different names that people in different places refer to him as. The Christ that is in all of us loves us more than anyone ever has and has never been separated from us, even when we've gone through the worst part of our own hells on earth. I'm reminded that yesterday, someone sent me some th pictures of Gaza and the Palestinian situation and what we know is modern Israel And I'm always moved to tears and compassion for the people of Gaza who are probably the, the most despised by its nation on earth and the people that have had to suffer the most for the longest period of time in our modern era. Because yes, I see Israel, Prince of God, <laughs> 
as one of the beasts on the planet, the Zionists, those that would destroy everything that's decent and good, those that are merciless in their theft of property and their destruction of life. The angry man says, tell me about Jesus. I don't want the damn religion that's attached to it. I want to know the reality of God in me, of Christ in me, of the Christ that loves the Buddha and the Muslim and the Christ that heals the wounds and touches the soul. That's what I want to know about. I don't want to know about your bullshit religion. I want to know about your relationship with the divine. Tell me about Jesus. It's not what we think. It's not what we've been told. It's better. So that's the message that Spirit laid at my heart this morning. And I'm glad I had the opportunity to share it. And I trust it will touch your heart as it has touched mine. Namaste.